There are many people who call me a false prophet. Many people attack me and make videos against me. Videos that I do not even watch. But there is something that I would like to ask my accusers. Why is it that when I pray, Jesus answers my prayers? Why does He heal me? Why does He provide in all my needs? If He is not pleased with me, we know that God does not answer the prayers of sinners. Why is it that Jesus answers my prayers? May Jesus bless you. Well, <laughs> good morning, brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God. 9.53 a.m., my time here in glorious Woodchuck, Illinois. <laughs> I am, first of all, let me say to you, I am very sorry to subject you to that um, so early in the morning. If you do not know who that was, I will tell you, that man is, whose name was Jean or Jan Bashoff, final call 07, okay? A wicked, lying devil heretic who is dead and burning in hell right now, okay? That man preached against the scriptures uh, against church buildings and um, yeah the, the man was desperately wicked vile and evil um, and he's in hell right now uh, he died of cancer which seems to be a punishment for a lot of these false prophets um, who teach contrary to the scriptures um, it seems cancer is something that they seem to acquire but the reason why I subjected you onto that is because it is very, very, very neat onto what you and I are going to be discussing today. As you saw in that video, John Boschoff asked the question to his accusers, why is then Jesus still answering his prayers? What? Jesus is answering his prayers. Who's answering the prayers? Now, he said that, and one of the things about John Boschoff was, he would, he would say that this is not the word of God. That, you know, he would say, well, the Bible is not the word of God. And I partly agree with that. The Bible is not the word of God. The scriptures are the word of God, okay? But um, he would be talking against the scriptures that you don't need a Bible, uh, you need to trust your feelings and that kind of stuff. But um, he would quote scripture only when it uh, suited his own needs, to suit his own agenda. But he did say in that video, as you saw, you, you'll have no choice but to watch that. In order, okay, so, and I, I, I beg your pardon. But like I said, very appropriate and meet for this video. He said, we know that God doesn't hear the prayers of sinners. John chapter 9. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures and follow me along, word by word, verse by verse, as we go through this, okay? This is going to be a this is going to be a, this is going to be a video that uh, it's going to cut a couple of you, it's going to sting. But we need, especially in these times, brethren. We need to consider who's answering the prayers. Who's answering these prayers? Turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to John chapter 9. John chapter 9. We want verses 24 on to verse 34. Now, this is about the guy um, who... Uh, this is about the guy who was made blind, who was blind, who was made to see that he was brought into the Pharisees and the council and whatnot, and um, they didn't believe he was blind. And then they brought in his parents, and they said, "Yeah, yeah, this is our son who was blind. You know, he was blind. Ask him. You know, 
So this is the uh, this is uh, coming off the heels of that in uh, John chapter nine. We are picking up from verse twenty four on to verse thirty four. Okay. Then again, then again called they the man that was blind and said unto him, Give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. Speaking of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, they called God a sinner. Yeah. He answered and said, Whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know, that whereas I was blind, now I see. Remember verse 25 here, coming up, okay? Just keep this in mind, what he said. Whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. But check this out, let's continue. Then said they to him again, What did he to thee? How opened he thine eyes? And if, we, if you were to read the entire context, uh, the entire chapter of uh, John chapter 9, it's like, bloop, bloop, I already told you. I already told you what he did. But he answered them, I have told you already. And ye did not hear. Hmm. Wherefore would ye hear it again? Will ye also be his disciples? Oh, Oh, there's a little stab at him. Okay. Then they reviled him and said, Thou art his disciple. <clears throat> but we are Moses' disciples. We know that God spake unto Moses. As for this fellow, we know not from whence he is fulfillment of prophecy. Even though they knew where Jesus came from, they didn't know from whence Jesus is. They did not know because they were blind. They did not see. They chose not to see God the Father standing before them, God amongst them. Okay? The man answered and said unto them, Why herein is a marvelous thing that ye know not from whence he is, and yet he hath opened mine eyes? Verse 31. Okay. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. But if any but if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. Since the world began, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind? Now remember in verse 25, okay? He answered and said, Whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know, that whereas I was blind, now I see. But look at verse 33. If this man were not of God, he could do nothing. Hmm. And of course, Jesus Christ was never a sinner. Jesus Christ, God the Father, is not a sinner. That's blasphemy. God forbid. God never sinned. God cannot sin. Okay? If this man were of God, he could do nothing. And look at the response. They answered and said unto him, Thou wast altogether born in sins, and dost thou teach us? Who do you think you are? Huh? <laughs> and they cast him out. Yeah, who do you think you are? Huh? You didn't go to Jesuits to get a piece of paper on your wall that says, man says I'm qualified to do this. You didn't pay $100,000 for that piece of paper. Who are you? You're not a legitimate so-and-so. <laughs> but as Mr. Devil Boy himself, Jean Boshoff, said, he, he kind of quoted this, Now we know that God heareth not sinners. So, well, if God doesn't hear sinners, then how is anyone going to be saved? Now, we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God, many lost people are worshipers of a God. Okay? And doeth his will. Him he heareth. His will. What is his will? He would. He wills that all men should what? Repent and come to the knowledge of the truth. Okay? Repent and come to the knowledge of the truth. What are you repenting of? Your self-righteousness. Okay? You're a good person. That you're worth it. Uh-huh. 
And see, his will is that all men would be saved. Not everybody is going to be saved because his will is that you come to him on his terms. The way he prescribes for you in the scriptures, especially in this dispensation which we are in. Okay? By grace through faith. Okay? So, we have to come to him according to his will. And his will for you, lost sinner, is to go to him broken of your self-righteousness. Okay? Go to Isaiah chapter 59. Isaiah chapter 59. See, there are so many out there who will take parts of the gospel and speak truth unto you. But you know what the majority of them leave out? Brokenness. The easy believism scumbag devils are notorious for that. They say uh, repentance is going from unbelief to belief. So God would have all men to come to belief and the knowledge of the truth? You have two beliefs. No. What you are repenting of is yourself. Your self-righteousness. You could not give up any sin and then go like the Lordship Salvation guys. You, what they say, you give up your sins, then go to God and he'll grant you repentance. That's Ray Comfort and Paul Washer, okay? And John MacArthur, that type of crowd, okay? You give up this and then go to the Lord, then he gives you repentance. No, you could not give up your sin if you had a gun pointed at your head, there's no way you could do that. No. What you are repenting of is that arrogance, that pride, that self-righteousness that is in you, that I'm a good person. That's what it is. Okay? But how many out there are these Christians? Okay? With, and at the end of this video, you're going to see, oh, wow. <laughs> uh, Good point of what we're talking about. How many Christians, okay, these Christians, fall for this just believe, hence still in your pride because you saved yourself because of your belief? Or they get the other version, which is very similar to easy believism, where someone comes up to you and just say, hey, call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. Have you ever wondered why... Easy believism, people say prayer is a work and that calling upon the name of the Lord is a work. Hmm? Why is that? Because these, these guys know that God will not hear their prayers because they're lost. Why? Because they still have pride within them. They are still in their sin of self-righteousness. Okay? That's why. And then you got the easy believism is like, just believe. You save yourself by your own belief. Or the other end of that, you got these devils who all skip over brokenness. All skip over scriptural repentance and come to you, call upon the name of the Lord. And then you got the easy believism guys attacking these people who call, who preach call on the name of the Lord and skipping over brokenness just like they do. It's the Hegelian principle. Argument, counter-argument to um, control the outcome, okay? Work in both sides of the war, as it were, okay? But Isaiah chapter 58, verses 1 on verse 8. Cry aloud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and shew my people their transgression, and the house of Jacob their sins. Show them their sins. Tell them that they are no good, that you can't save yourself. There's nothing good in you. You are a sinner. I am a sinner who is chief. And see, the devils, what they do is they work in an umbrella fashion. It's like, well, we're all sinners. We're all this, we're all that. What about you personally? Personal responsibility and accountability. Like I've told you before, a good sign to tell you that someone is lost is when they're blaming other people for what they've done, okay? Unfortunately, I know of a tragic young man who does that. 
Well, I, it's their fault that I did this. I, their fault. And, yeah, I sinned, but it's their fault. Yeah, the woman that thou gavest me to be with, she gave me of the tree and I did eat? Huh. Yeah. Yeah. And these lost people, okay, these Christians, God answers, God answers prayers, yes, of those who actually seek him with all the heart. We're, we're going to look at that. But who, who's answering some of these people's prayers? Let's continue in Isaiah chapter 58. Okay? Let's reread re again. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and shew my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Tell them that they are lost, going to hell that they can't save themselves, that they ain't good, okay? Get them out from underneath the umbrella, umbrella and cut them with the sword. Personal responsibility and accountability, okay? Yet they seek me daily, but yet not wanting to personally take responsibility for what they've done against the Lord. And delight to know my ways, as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask me of the ordinances of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. But yet, in verse 1, Lord's telling Isaiah to tell the people their sins. Show them, hey, you, you're in sin. But yet, they, they want to hear what God has to say. But yet, not that. They want to jump over that thing when you say, you, you're not good. Their heart is divided. Let's continue. Let's continue. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast ye you find pleasure, and exact all your labors. Doctrinally, dispensationally, this is a different thing. Okay, not doctrinally and dispensationally for us today in this dispensation. But the point is, Doing religiosity, having religiosity as an outward shoe or adornment as a facade, but yet not dealing with the inner truth that you are not good, that you are not a sinner. That's what they, they don't want to hear that. You are not a sinner. Okay? They don't want to hear. They don't want to hear you're a sinner. But you got guys out there, it's like, well, you, you're not a sinner. God's not mad at you. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. They're not dealing with the inner. They're not dealing with the truth. Okay? They want people to tell them, you're, you're not a sinner. We're all sinners. So, hey, since we're all sinners, hey, you're not that bad. You're not that bad of a sinner. Right? Yeah. Let's continue. But see, they have an outward adornment. But yet, they take pleasure. Behold, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure. And exact all your labors. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate, and to smite with the fist of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day, to make your voice to be heard on high. Is it such a fast that I have chosen? I have chosen. Look at that. Okay? See, today, you want, you want the Lord to save you, you have to come to him on his terms. You have to be broken. That's what Romans chapter 3, verses 10 on to verse 18, which comes before the rest that these devil easy believism heretics like to harp on. Okay, you have to you have to be broken of your self-righteousness. You have to be broken. You have to be destroyed on the inside. Okay? Is it such a fast that I have chosen? Are you going the way that he has chosen? Or are you booting the door out of the way and climbing up some other way? A day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Wilt thou call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I have chosen? To lose the bands of wickedness? to undo the heavy burdens and to let the oppressed go free and that ye break every yoke? Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry? Now, these are all works, different dispensation, okay? Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry and that thou bring the poor that are out, that are cast out to thy house? When thou seest the naked, that thou cover him and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh? 
Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be your be thy re reward. Now, they, those are all talking about works, but you got to remember, charity is a byproduct, if you will, of our Lord's salvation, okay? Of that seal until the day of redemption. These are all talking about works, but see, these Christians with the outward facade and adornment that have a religiosity that are being told that having their ears itched that God's not mad at you. You're not a sinner. Okay. God, God loves you so much. He just wants you to come into his kingdom without any, any requirement, all skipping over. Cry aloud, spare not. Lift up thy voice. We're looking at verse one again. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. And shew my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Cut that out. Go straight to the belief or go straight to the call. See, you avoid brokenness, scriptural repentance, and go to just belief or call, then yeah, you're saving yourself by what you do. Okay? Now, go to, let's go to Romans chapter 3. See, this is imperative for us to address first. Because when someone doesn't go to the Lord on his terms with a broken and contrite heart, then is God going to hear you? God hears the prayer of the broken and contrite sinner, yes. But the lost sinner who isn't broken and yet praying to the Lord and yet having prayers answered, uh, but yet they're not broken? Not broken, but yet prayers are being answered. Who's answering them prayers? Who's the one who's guiding? Makes you wonder, doesn't it? Romans chapter 3. Let's, let's look at the one that everybody, all these devils like to avoid. Romans chapter 3, verses 10 on to verse 18. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues have they used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Hmm. So, see, this is here, and you read in Romans 1 and 2, which leads up to Romans chapter 3, obviously, is there to break you, lost sinner, of your pride, of your self-righteousness, okay? That's what this is here for. See, lost people can definitely understand verse, uh, chapters 1, 2, and up to Romans chapter 3 here, uh, by their own selves, because it's their design of our Lord to break you of yourself, of your self-righteousness, of your pride, okay? We're still going to struggle with pride. Hey, I have a pride problem myself, and I'm a saved man, okay? But see, in order for the Lord to save you, you have to be broken of yourself and realize and know that you're not good. You can't save yourself. There ain't nothing you can do. See, and that hopelessness of yourself will turn you onto the greater. I see, this is what all these lost people are trying to avoid. It hurts. It's simple. It's beautiful. But it hurts. It sure does hurt. Now, go to Proverbs 28. Proverbs 28. And see, what I am going to um, suggest onto you is unless... You are seeking the Lord out of a broken and contrite heart. If you are going to the Lord still in your pride, still thinking you're a good person without any brokenness, eh, is God the one who's going to hear your prayers? Or Satan? Proverbs chapter 28, verses 5 on to verse 9. And, you know, in Romans chapter 3, what we just looked at, that was a form of judgment. Okay, 
when you, I mean, that's that's another thing about Romans chapter three, verses ten on to verse eighteen, which the easy believism heretics, the the um, um, ecumenical guys, uh, like to avoid. Okay, because. It shows you your condition as a lost man or a lost woman, that you're not good, okay? And that at your best state, you can't be good. But see, Romans chapter 3, verses 10 on to verse 18 is a form of judgment against you to show you that you're lost, that you can't save yourself, that you ain't good even at your best, okay? So, Proverbs chapter 28, verses 5 on to verse 9. Evil men understand not judgment. But they that seek the Lord understandeth all things. Again, why do you think the easy believism heretics are prayers are work, calling upon the name of the Lord is a work? Well, calling upon the name of the Lord as a work, avoiding scriptural repentance, then yeah. But see, calling upon the name of the Lord, getting to that point through scriptural repentance, through brokenness, that's a different thing. That's the scriptural gospel, okay? Repentance towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ, okay? Let's continue. Evil men understand not judgment. Why? Because they're still good. But they that seek the Lord understand all things. This is a faithful saying, worthy of all acceptation. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of, hello, of whom I am chief, Okay? Better is the poor that walketh in his uprightness than he that is perverse in his ways, though he be rich. Perverse in his ways, still in his pride, though he be rich in the worldly things. Okay, All this will I give unto you. If you fall down and worship me, all shall be thine. And who do you think these Christians in these buildings are worshiping? You think they're worshiping the true God of the scriptures, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father? No. No. They're worshiping Satan, looking for that man of sin, the son of perdition, to eventually come. Okay? Whoso keepeth the law is a wise son, but he that is companion of riotous men shameth his father. You are the company you keep. Okay? He that by usury and unjust gain increaseth his substance, he shall gather it for him that will pity the poor. Usury and unjust gain. Okay, Usury is kind of like interest. You know, interest on something. You give someone, uh, uh, like somebody a loan on usury with interest and that kind of stuff. Okay, For us, today in this dispensation, we can't repay the Lord anything that he has done for us, we can't repay him. Our reasonable service is not to be conformed to this world. That is our reasonable service. To give back unto the Lord is to be humble, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and to not be conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That is our reasonable service. That is the only service that we can give unto the Lord for the benefit that he has given us of his salvation. Okay? Verse 9. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be an abomination. Dispensational difference. But, but, the teaching is, he that turneth his, away his ear from hearing the law, the law showed you that you aren't good. The law shows you that at your best state you are altogether vanity. The law shows you that you wouldn't have known that covetousness was a sin unless the law said, thou shalt not covet. So you don't want to hear that. Even his prayer shall be abomination. So, when you have the church of the living God are out there talking, well, I'm a Christian. Oh, I'm, I'm, that's good. I'm sure you are. And you talk, start talking about, I can't believe that God saved a scumbag like me, sinner who is chief. I'm not good. I'm, I'm, I, you know, I can't save myself. There was nothing good in me. There was, I, you know, why did God save me of all people? You ever talk with a Christian like that? It's like, well, you're not all that bad. Excuse me? Then, you know, when you run into a Christian who says, well, hey, don't, don't beat yourself up. 
dude, I can't beat up on myself enough. Therefore, I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. Wait a minute. You're telling me don't be too bad on you, too bad on yourself. Don't be too hard on yourself. Wait a second now. Wait a second. <laughs> Tell me, how did you come to the Lord? But verse nine, he that turneth away his ear from hearing the law. You turn away your ear from hearing the truth that you are not good, that you cannot save yourself. Even your prayer is an is. Even his prayer shall be abomination. You don't want to hear what God has to say of your state as a lost sinner. But yet you want all that goes along with being a Christian. Who's the one who's answering your prayer then? Like we saw, John Boshoff. Who's answering his prayers? Wasn't God. Wasn't our Lord Jesus Christ God our Father? That's for sure. It was a little G God of this world. Okay? That's who. Now go to Ezekiel chapter 14. Ezekiel chapter 14. Ezekiel chapter 14, verses 1 on the verse 5. Then came certain of the elders of Israel unto me and sat before me. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their heart and put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. Should I be inquired of at all by them? Think about the Christians who go to the Lord Jesus Christ for health, wealth, and prosperity to get a boyfriend, a girlfriend, your best life now. Then, Easy believism gospel appear, appeals to them. Why? Because they jump over the brokenness. The call upon the name of the Lord. Jump over the brokenness. So you save yourself by your own belief. Or you save yourself because of the call. No. See, you arrive at belief. You arrive at calling upon the name of the Lord by being broken. By being broken. So... Son of man, these men have set up their, in their heart the stumbling block of their iniquity. Hmm. Son of man, these men have set up, excuse me, their idols in their heart. And remember, idol is always talking about a little statue. Give me a break, pal. Now, what's the idol that you got in your heart, pal? Huh? What is it, huh? Uh, look at all the land. Look at all that the Lord has given me. It's an idol for you. What about the teaching of a man? There's an idol for you. What about the one that you're looking at in the mirror? There's an idol for you. Huh? What about that flesh, that skin suit that you go after, lusting for a wife or a husband? Huh? Looking only on the outside. Huh? That's an idol for you. What about that big house, that nice car, all that do-re-me that you want? There's an idol for you. What about your own interpretations of things? Remember, dear friend, an idol is not just relegated to a little Mary statue, okay? Please, get your head out from betwixt your buttocks on that, okay? Thank you. But, son of man, these men have set up their idols in their heart and put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. Should I be inquired of at all by them? Think about this. Romans 1, 2, and 3 is there to break you of your self-righteousness. You want to skip all over that and go right to the Lord? You have an idol and you have set up the stumbling block of your iniquity in your heart. Should I be inquired of at all by them? Remember, all things that were written before time were written for our learning. If you have in your heart still coming to the Lord, well, I'm a good person. I'm a good person. That doesn't mean that you're not going to struggle with pride after the Lord saves you. Romans chapter 7, okay? Paul struggled with pride. And as and looking into this myself, you know, I tell you often I have a pride problem. Um, I, and I do. And um, my pride has cost me. But I'm a saved man. 
See, in my pride, similar to Paul, there were things there that I chose to ignore. But yet, I had my heart determined on doing something I wanted to do. The Lord, at the end, of course, I'm talking about Paul going to Jerusalem. The Lord three times admonished Paul, hey, don't go to Jerusalem. Hey, don't, I, hey, okay, fine. He went. The Lord turned it into good in the latter end. But he had another way for Paul to get there. I can relate to Paul in that very thing. And thank you for pointing that out to me. You know who you are, and I love you for it. And you're right. Just like Paul. Just like Paul. See, we of the Church of the Living God, we're saved we're saved sinners, born again, converted, new creatures. But see, our spirit and soul are still within this skin suit, which these devils love. And because of that, the spirit war against the flesh. And because of that, in pride, we can decide to do things even though we are admonished not to. See, we still struggle with it because our spirit and soul are within the skin suit because sin has been relegated to, sin has been relegated to the flesh, okay? That's why you got to beware of all these people who, who worship it, okay? Like that buffoon, Baltrun in uh, Blackpool and like several people up in Canada and here uh, uh, Northeast, you know, Elmer in Northeast, these people who love the flesh, okay? You got to watch out for these people, okay? But see, when you have an idol in your heart, your self-love, shall you be inquired, shall the Lord be inquired of by you then? If you're not broken? Therefore speak unto them and say unto them, thus saith the Lord God, every man of the house of Israel that setteth up his idols in his heart and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face and cometh to the prophet. I, the Lord, will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of his idols. So, wait. The, see Brad right there. God's answering the, sinner, uh, the sinner. Um, Really. Look at that verse. I, the Lord, will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of his idols. Really? What does that mean? We'll, we'll look at that. Let's read. That I may take the house of Israel in their own hearts, because they are all estranged from me through their idols. Therefore, I will choose their delusion. Why? Because they chose the thing that I delight not in. Okay? Uh, about this, Hold your place here and go to Jeremiah chapter 11. Jeremiah chapter 11. It says right there, Brad's, the Lord's going to answer him. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 11, verses 11 under verse 14. Therefore thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring evil upon them, which they shall not be able to escape. And though they shall cry unto me, I will not hear, hearken unto them. Then shall the cities of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem go and cry unto other gods, unto whom they offer incense, but they shall not save them at all in the time of their trouble. For according to the number of thy cities were thy gods, O Judah, and according to the number of the streets of Jerusalem have ye set up altars to that shameful thing, even altars to burn incense unto Baal. Therefore pray not thou, for this people, neither lift up a cry or prayer for them, for I will not hear them in the time that they cry unto me for their trouble. See, someone who tries to come to the Lord while still having pride in their heart that they are a good person, they have what? They have an idol and the stumbling block of their iniquity. The Lord is going to answer them. How? Uh, you have pride in your heart. You're still not broken. Okay? There. There's your answer. Deal with it. Okay? But now, let's continue in Ezekiel chapter 14, verses 6, on to verse 11. Therefore, say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, Repent, comma, and turn yourselves from your idols. Context. 
talking about little statues, um, statues, no, statues. But turn yourselves from your idols today. What is an idol on to you? Your reputation, your house, your car, your money, your flesh, whatever. Hmm? Repent and turn yourselves from your idols and turn away your faces from all your abominations. Turn away your face from your own self. Okay? Quit beholding your own self in the mirror. For everyone of the house of Israel or of the strangers that sojourneth in Israel, which se separateth himself from me, and setteth up his idols in his heart, and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face, and cometh to a prophet to inquire of him concerning me, I, the Lord, will answer him by myself. Jeremiah chapter 34. Jeremiah chapter 34. See, Brad, God's answering the lost sinner. Jeremiah chapter 34, verses 12 on to verse 17. Therefore, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, I made a covenant with your fathers in the day that I brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondmen, saying, at the end of seven years, let ye go every man his brother in Hebrew, which hath been sold unto thee. And when he hath served thee six years, thou shalt let him go free from thee. But your fathers hearken not unto me, neither incline their ear. And this, as the context is, uh, the children of Israel finally let go their Hebrew servants and stuff like that of their own kin, according to the law. They did good according to the law in the sight of God, but they reneged and went back and took them back for their servants again. Okay, that's the backstory. Verse 15. And ye were now turned and had done right in my sight in proclaiming liberty every man to his neighbor. And ye had made a covenant before me in the house which is called by my name. But, double-minded man, man is unstable in all his ways. Someone who set up an idol in their heart, doing only what is good as a facade, a religious shoe, religiosity. Okay? But, ye turned and polluted my name. And caused every man his servant and every man his handmaid, whom ye had set at liberty at their pleasure, to return and brought them into subjection, to be unto you for servants and for handmaids. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, ye have not hearkened unto me to proclaim, in proclaiming liberty, every one to his brother and every man to his neighbor. Behold, I will answer him myself. Behold, I proclaim a liberty to you. <laughs> this is not to scare you. Saith the Lord, I proclaim a liberty for you. Excuse me. I proclaim a liberty for you, saith the Lord, to the sword, to the pestilence, and to the famine. And I will make you to be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. So, here in verse 7 in Ezekiel chapter 14, I, the Lord, will answer him myself when he goes to the false prophet who will itch his ears and give them statutes that are not good. Why? To drive them farther away from the Lord. You got to remember, Satan does have power. Satan does answer prayers. Because look at these, these false prophets. They have to put off the, the shoe, the facade, that their prayers are being answered so that these people will be duped to follow them. Hmm? Hmm? And the Lord says here, I proclaim a liberty for you, said the Lord, to the sword, to the pestilence, to the famine, famine. And I will make you to be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. And I will give the men that have transgressed my covenant which have not performed the words of the covenant which they had made before me when they cut the calf in twain and passed through the parts thereof. The princes of Judah and the princes of Jerusalem and the eunuchs and the priests and all the people of the land which passed through between the parts of the calf, I know we're reading more, I will even give them into the hand of their enemies and into the hand of them that seek their life. I know we read a little bit more than what we said, beg your pardon, but. And their dead bodies shall be meat unto the fowls of the heaven and to the beasts of the earth. 
I will even give them into the hand of their enemies. God will give these people over to these things. They don't come to him with the whole heart. They go to a false prophet to hear what they want to hear. So the Lord's like, fine, that's what you want. Here, go ahead, have it. Okay, now let's continue. In Ezekiel chapter 14, picking up at verse 8. And I will set my face against that man and will make him a sign and a proverb. And I will cut him off from the midst of my people and ye shall know that I am the Lord. And if the prophet be deceived, when he has spoken a thing, I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet, and I will stretch out my hand upon him and will destroy him from the midst of my people Israel. God deceives the prophet? Wait a minute, Brad. You said your God doesn't deceive people, but ah, ah, you got a contradiction there, don't you? Let me place here. Go to 1 Kings chapter 22. 1 Kings chapter 22. Okay. First Kings chapter twenty-two. No, King Ahab. You wanted, you wanted some good instruction in righteousness. Read up about King Ahab. Okay. King Ahab had a whole bunch of prophets, like what, hundreds of prophets who came before him and prophesied in the name of the Lord things that he wanted to hear. But there was one prophet, Micaiah whom Ahab hated, because he says, unquote, uh, he never prophesies, prophesied good unto me, only evil, because Micaiah told him the truth, while the false prophets told Ahab what he wanted to hear to bring him into judgment and destruction for his, the evil of his ways. See, Second, 1 Kings chapter 22, verses 20, under verse 23. Okay? And the Lord said, who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one said on this manner, and another said on that manner. And there came forth a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, I will go forth. Are you looking at that? And I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, and he said, thou shalt persuade him and prevail also. Go forth and do so. So the Lord gave this lying spirit permission to do so. Okay? And Ahab was not one of his, but even though he was the king of Israel. Okay? So a lying spirit came up before the Lord and said, I'll, I'll deceive Ahab. And the Lord's like, Okay? Go ahead. Go ahead. You'll succeed. So the Lord allowed it to happen. Okay? The Lord allowed the lying spirit to go and deceive. The Lord himself did not do it. We covered this in the one uh, previous video. Okay? Because people like to say, well, since God allowed it, it's his fault. No, man has free will, remember. Okay? Don't forget that. But God allowed this to happen. So in verse 23, Now therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets. And the Lord hath spoken evil concerning thee. So the Lord putting in the mouth of these people, these prophets a lying spirit, meaning he's allowing it to happen. He himself did not do it because we just saw it. Okay? And also, too, holding your place still in Ezekiel, okay? Where he says, and if the prophet be deceived when he has spoken a thing, I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet, and I will stretch out my hand upon him and will destroy him from the midst of my people Israel. Hold your place here, and you know where we're going, don't you? Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Of course, of course, it's meat. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 9 under verse 12. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness and them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned, 
who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Because they received not the love of the truth. The love of the truth. You're not good. You're not righteous. You are a sinner who is chief. You can't hide under the umbrella of generalities. It's you. you got to take accountability and responsibility before the Lord God, our Father, Jesus Christ. You can't slide in under the carpet of general generalities. Okay, It's personal accountability. And when someone who has an idol in their heart, whatever that is, goes to seek the Lord, the Lord is like, hey, you don't want to hear the truth? Okay, you're a sinner, you're not good, you're not righteous, you don't want to hear the truth? Fine, I'll give you what you want. You want to be deceived? You want to think you're a good person? Fine. Hands you over to Satan. <laughs> Why? Because you have set an idol up in your heart, just like Satan. He will be like the Most High. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Your father is the devil. And the lust of your fathers you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, because there was no truth in him. Okay? And hence, because your father is the devil, and you pray to your, to your Jesus. Of course. The little jig out of this world will give you what you want. If you fall down and worship me, all shall be done. Let's continue in Ezekiel chapter 14. Okay? Verses 10 and 11. And they shall bear the punishment of their iniquity. The punishment of the prophet shall be even as the punishment of him that seeketh unto him that the house of Israel may go no more astray from me, neither be polluted any more with all their transgressions, but that they may be my people, and I may be their God, saith the Lord God. But see, now, as we were talking about, you've got to remember about Satan. Go to Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13. Okay? There is so much more that could be added to this. Okay, there is a whole, <laughs> whole lot of stuff that could be added to it. This is what the Lord picked out. Okay, this is what the Lord picked out. Revelation chapter 13, verses 11 unto the close of the chapter. Okay, time in Jacob's trouble, church of the living God, the body of Christ is not there. But we got to remember this, okay? We have to remember this. Revelation chapter 13, verses 11 unto verse 18. And I beheld another beast coming out, coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Remember in the book of Exodus that the magicians were able to also mimic some of what God was able to do, okay? Uh, the throwing down of their uh, rods on the ground, they became serpents. But Aaron's sir, uh, rod ate up their rods, okay? Up, ate up their serpents, okay? Pouring, down, pouring blood, uh, making water become blood. The magicians of Egypt were able to do that. The calling up of frogs, you know, and the French. Aha! You're a good caterers, huh? Give me the frog legs! Aha! <laughs> you, my French brethren, beg your pardon. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay? But yes, they called the uh, frogs up. When it came to lice, though, they couldn't do it. The magicians. There's only so far that Satan can imitate God or mimic what he does. Okay? Only so far. Okay, but, okay, and he doeth, verse 13, and he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. Now, this isn't a dis different dispensation. The body of Christ is not on the earth during this. This is for you lost people who are going to be left behind going through the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? But for today, 
Satan and his ministers, ministers of righteousness, with no marvel, Satan himself is transformed into an angel of life, into an angel of light. And it is, is it a surprise that his ministers also be transformed into the ministers of righteousness? See, in order for you lost people to believe in what Satan is giving you, he does have to bring to pass certain prayers that his uh, people pray to him, like Jean Bashoff, like these easy believism devils, like the cell evangelists, the hell evangelists on TV, okay? Like Jean Bashoff, who is providing for his needs? One, the God of the scripture was the God of this world, Satan, okay? And Satan, to make you lost people believe, you Christians who are not of the church of the living God, to make you believe that you are on the right path, Satan will answer prayers for those who don't come to the Lord correctly, according to his will, broken and contrite. See, you boot the door <laughs> and climb up some other way. Who's answering your prayers? Let's continue. Verse 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, here's the mark of the beast, and he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the number of the beast, or the number of his name. During the time of Jacob's trouble, the mark of the beast. So we just saw. That's what all this stuff that's going on today is preparing you for. Okay? <laughs> With the steel of the Jesuit poniard. Okay? And the religion of the poison crown. It all ties together. See, this psychological operation known as the poison crown that the Jesuits have started, it's a religion. You have to have faith in it in order for it to work. And hence, you have faith in the poison crown. Gotta get that steel, Jesuit upon you, boy. See, it's preparing you because you have religion. You have religion. And what they're telling you, it's a religion. See, it's a religion. Here is wisdom. Here's the fear of the Lord. Let him that hath understanding, departing from evil, count the number of the beast. And you got to remember too, the mark of the beast is somehow going to be linked to the internet. Okay, that kind of stuff. So if someone wants to, you in the time of Jacob's trouble, you want to avoid all of this, you have to go rogue. You have to um, go into the wilderness and not be dependent on electronics. Okay. Why? For it is the number of a man, and his number is 603 score and 6. 666. Six, six. Now, there are many arguments about what 666, six, six. it's the number of a man, obviously. And there's like something about in the United Nations, seat number 666 six, six, or something like that. I, on the other hand, believe that 666, six, six, which equates in ancient Hebrew, I believe it is, www. World Wide Web. See, during the time of Jacob's trouble, that mark of the beast is going to be linked to the internet with the 5G or 6G, whatever it is. That's what I believe. Okay. Whether it's going to be a microchip or what scan reader, we do not know. We do know that it's going to be something electronic. Okay. That we do know. Okay. That we do know. Okay. So if you want to avoid all that, you got to go rogue. You got to go you know, turn off your cell phone and pitch away everything, okay? Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind, okay? A little rabbit trail on this in this video. But the point we looked at this for is because, because Satan, in order to deceive, he has to be able to answer the prayers of his people to deceive you. Again, I ask you, who's answering your prayers? Le uh, Lamentations chapter 3. Lamentations chapter 3. Lamentations chapter 3. 
Come on, fingers, work with me. Lamentations chapter 3, verses 42 on to verse 44. 42 on to verse 44 in Lamentations chapter 3. We have transgressed and have rebelled. Thou hast not pardoned. Thou hast covered, uh, covered with anger. Thou hast covered with anger and persecuted us. Thou hast slain. Thou hast not pitied. Thou hast covered thyself with the cloud that our prayer should not pass through. Hmm. Again, if you come to the Lord with pride in your heart, thinking that you're a good person and only coming to him for what you can gain in this world, you're coming to him not according to his will. Okay? You need to be broken. Okay? There's no getting, you know, it's easy to believe some devils can jump over all of that all day, all they want. They're making you a false convert. Okay? That's their goal, to damn you to hell. And when you don't want to be broken, when you don't want to hear that glorious, beautiful truth that you're a scumbag, hi, hi, that you're scum, you can't save yourself, you're not good. Yeah, that hurts, but it's glorious. That makes by grace through faith even more so beautiful that God came into this, the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. You don't understand that grace of God if you've saved yourself by your own belief or saved yourself by calling upon the name of the Lord. You call upon the name of the Lord when you are brought about that uh, onto him through repentance, through brokenness, contrition, and fear of the Lord. Okay? Brokenness of your self-righteousness. You, it, it has to be hopeless. If you have not reached a sense of uh, sense or place of hopelessness in your life, and, and yet you just believed or called upon the name of the Lord without that hopelessness, you're not saved. Contrition. That hopelessness will not only create a sorrow, but a fear, okay? Because in that, in that brokenness, you could have, you know, self-sorrow, pity party. But true brokenness, being brought unto the Lord, it's, wow, you have done nothing. You didn't deserve to die for what I did. I deserve to die. Uh, Lord, like David said, Lord, it's I who have committed these sins. What have these children done? See, in taking full responsibility and accountability for the Lord, you are going to be shown of just how small you truly are. And that's going to create a sorrow in you that he, the righteous God, the lamb without blemish, died for you. I can't, I can explain that to you. You lost people ain't going to get it. Why? Because you're not broken. But you go to him in your pride. You go to him, well, hey, I mean, look, at, look at these guys, huh? Look at how well they're doing. I want that. Well, sure, just leave. Or, hey, see, it says, call in the name of the Lord. But what about my sin? I don't worry about that. It says, call in the name of the Lord. But am I not a good person? Oh, God's not mad at you. We're going to look at a disgusting website here at the very end of this video so you can see exactly what we're talking about, okay? Brokenness, dear friend. You can't be fixed unless you're broken. Okay? Now, and when you come to the Lord falsely, not according to his will, but yet think you're going to the true God of the scriptures, go to Judges. Go to Judges chapter 11, okay? Judges chapter 11. Judges chapter 11, verses 24 on to verse 27. You, you're going to like this. Now, this is Jephthah speaking of the Ammonites, the Moabites, and that kind of stuff. Moab, Moab and the Ammonites, okay? Descended of Lot, related unto Abraham. Hmm. Keep that in mind. But look at this. Judges chapter 11, verses 24 and verse 27. 
Look what Jephthah says. Wilt not thou possess that which Chemosh thy God giveth thee to possess? So whomsoever the Lord our God shall drive out from before us, them will we possess. Look at that verse. Wilt not thou possess that which Chemosh thy God giveth thee to possess? What does Satan say in Luke chapter 4? Shows them all the kingdoms in the, of the earth and of the glory of them. It's like, all this has been given unto me, and whomsoever I will, I give it. If, you, if therefore thou shalt fall down and worship me, all shall be thine. Chemosh. Who do you think Chemosh is? Wilt not thou possess that which Chemosh thy God giveth thee to possess? Satan is the little g-god of this world given to him for judgment upon this world? Huh? And you, you just believe. You, you just call. Huh? And God loves you. Yeah? No brokenness. Skip right over that. Yeah. Are you not going to receive what Chemosh thy God giveth thee? Yeah. And now... Art thou anything better than Balak, the son of Sippor, king of Moab? Did he ever strive against Israel, or did he ever fight, uh, fight against them? While well, Israel dwelt in Hezbon and her towns, and Arar and her towns, and in all the cities that be along by the coast of Arnon, three hundred years, why therefore did ye not recover them within that time? Wherefore I have not sinned against thee, but thou doest me wrong to war against me. The Lord, the judge, be judged this day between the children of Israel and the children of Ammon. The dividing line, you know. The Lord, the judge, be the judge this day between the children of Israel. The instruction here. The Lord be the judge between those who are his and the children of Ammon. Give them over, you know. They have chosen Satan, their God, Chemosh, that they have chosen for themselves. The Lord is going to judge between his and who are not his. And the prayers that are answered by Satan always benefit what? The flesh. Nothing more. Nothing more, dear friends. And going to Jeremiah chapter 48... You might be saying, well, what about those who are seeking? Uh, someone who is genuinely seeking the Lord with a broken and contrite heart? Yes, the Lord will hear those prayers from someone who is genuinely seeking the Lord with a broken and contrite heart. Broken and contrite heart. See, people can be broken, but they can turn that brokenness into pride and self-glorification. How? Why? I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a victim. Everybody has abused me. It's always someone else's fault. See, that's self-righteousness right there. You turn brokenness into a, a way to exalt yourself, into self-pity. But see, true brokenness, according to Scripture, will lead on to godly sorrow. There is a brokenness that, will, that doesn't lead on to godly sorrow, but that will lead on to self-glorification. Which one is it? Which one is it? Which one, boy? Hmm? Jeremiah chapter 48. Jeremiah chapter 48. We want verses 7 on to verse 13. In Jeremiah chapter 48. For because thou hast trusted in thy works and in thy treasures. Works. I'm saved because I just believe. I, I'm saved because I just called upon the name of the Lord. I'm saved because God loves me. Or I'm saved because I gave up all this stuff. And then I came to... Uh, for because thou hast trusted in thy works and in thy treasures. See, again, you come to faith, contrition, a uh, brokenness, contrition, calling on the name of the Lord, you come to these things, to faith, to calling on the name of the Lord, you come by that, to that way, 
by scriptural repentance being broken of yourself. And a brokenness that is based upon the scriptures. Broken because you know are shown through the scriptures that, wow, there's no hope for me. That kind of brokenness will lead on to godly sorrow. But a brokenness that only comes to the law, by the loss of all things and results in self-glorification through self-pity. I don't know. No. What kind of brokenness do you got, boy? For because thou hast trusted in thy works and in thy treasures, thou shalt also be taken, and Chemosh shall go forth into captivity with his priests and his princes together. Who do you think Chemosh is? You want to see? And, and, and note this. And Chemosh shall go forth into captivity with his priests and his princes together. To place Isaiah chapter 14. Oh, 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 oh. Come on. Oh, yeah, I know. We, I know. I know. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Isaiah chapter 14. V verse 15. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. And of course, in Isaiah chapter 14, here it talks about Lucifer, how he has fallen from heaven. Verse 12 and verse 13. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Who do you think Chemosh is? Who do you think Chemosh represents? Back in Jeremiah chapter 48, verse 7. And Chemosh shall go forth into captivity with his priests, Jesuits, and princes altogether. And the spoilers shall come upon every city, and no city shall escape. The valley also shall perish, and the slain and the plain shall be destroyed, as the Lord has spoken. Give wings unto Moab, that it may flee and get away. For the cities thereof shall be desolate, without any to dwell, in, there, dwell therein. Look at verse 10. Cursed be he that doeth the work of the Lord deceitfully, and cursed be he that keepeth back his sword from blood. Mm. Moab hath been at ease from his youth, and, ha and he hath settled on his lees, and hath not been emptied from vessel to vessel. Neither hath he gone into captivity, therefore his taste remaineth in him, and his scent is not changed. He has not been emptied, you have not been broken. But yet you have religiosity and your prayers are being answered, but you have not been emptied. God ain't the one answering your prayers, pal. Verse 12. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will send unto him wanderers that shall cause him to wander and shall empty his vessels and break their bottles. And Moab shall be ashamed of Chemosh as the house of Israel was ashamed of Bethel, their confidence. Woe unto them who go to Egypt for help, who stay on horses, but not my spirit. What? That's, uh, what is that? That's Isaiah 30, right? You ought to know this by now. Isaiah 30? Oh, no, 31. <laughs> Verses 1 on the verse 3. Woe to them that go down to Egypt, the world, for help. And who is the little G-God of this world? And stay on horses and trust in chariots because they are many. And in horsemen, because they are very strong, but they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord. 
Yet he also is wise and will bring evil and will not call back his words, but will arise against the house of the evildoers and against the help of them that work iniquity. Now the Egyptians, those of the world, are men and not God, and their horses flesh, not spirit. When the Lord shall stretch out his hand, both he that helpeth shall fall, and he that is hoping shall fall down, and they all shall fail together. They shall all fail together. Hmm. And go to Ezekiel now 33. Hmm. Ezekiel chapter 33, verses 30 on to verse 33. Also thou son of man, the children of thy people still are talking against thee by the walls and in the doors of the houses, and speak one to another, every one to his brother, saying, Come, I pray you, and hear what is the word that cometh forth from the Lord. Oh, they want to hear it. You want to hear what he has to say, but you just don't want to hear about true scriptural repentance. You'd love to hear about, oh, well, repentance is going from unbelief to belief. Remember, repentance is defined in context. Okay? And they come unto thee as the people cometh. And they sit before thee as my people. And they hear thy words, but they will not do them. For with their mouth they shew much love. Don't look at me. But their heart goeth after their covetousness. And the Lord abhorreth the covetous. See, you come to the Lord with covetousness in your heart by wanting worldly things. He's not going to hear you. He's not going to hear you. Why? Because you have the idol set up in your heart, the stumbling block of your iniquity. But if you come to him, terror and fear and brokenness of yourself and sorry that he died for you. That's the prayer he's going to hear. That's true seeking. A seeking predicated on worldly gain is not truly seeking the Lord. You got to have the hell scared out of you first. And lo, Thou art unto them a very lovely song, as song of one that hath a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument. For they hear thy words, but they do them not. Oh, I, 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 <laughs> how many times have I received emails? It's like, well, Brad, I really love what you preach, but then the Lord will have me to sp speak something that um, cuts them, that uh, pokes their self-righteousness. Then they get all... Ew! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I think you preach good, but you know, you're, you're a little too, what, oh, what is it? You're a little too legalistic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're, pre you're preaching work salvation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and lo, thou art unto them a very lovely song of one that hath a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument. For they hear thy words, but they do them not. They like to hear it. They like to hear only the good things, but when it comes to the glorious truth that you are a sinner who is chief, and that you're not good, that, that they don't like. You, you, you know, Brad, you, 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 you do pretty good, but you're just a little too, you're a little too, you, know, you don't have enough love. And when this cometh to pass, lo, it will come. Then shall they know that a prophet hath been among them. A broken heart that belongs to the Lord is one that is broken of its self-righteousness. And you have to remember what it says in James chapter 1, verses 5 on to verse 8. If any of you lack wisdom, fear the Lord. Let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally. Giveth to all men liberally, yes, and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. But! 
Let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Her ways are movable, that thou canst not know them. What's the name of your channel today there, Hotshot? For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Why? A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Double-minded. Double-minded. Okay? A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Now, faith. Okay? Faith. Notice we're in the book of James, which is for the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? And let's go to another uh, book that uh, relates for the Jews unto the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Verse 6. But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe, number one, that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Diligently seek him. And what did we read in James? Hmm? What did we just look at in James? But let him ask in faith nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Again, look at the evil, easy, evil, easy believism heretics. They have faith in their faith. Their faith is not on the Lord Jesus Christ. Their faith is in their faith, just like the metaphysical mind science people, like Mary Baker Eddy, like these prosperity crazies, okay? Their faith is in their faith. Same thing with these devils. Their faith is in their call, okay? You call on the name of the Lord without being broken of your self-righteousness? Yeah, that's heresy. See, brokenness again, people brokenness brokenness this is what is being skipped over today because no one wants to hear it no one wants to hear it but see if you're double-minded not broken having your mind on worldly things while trying to have a mind on the things of the lord you're unstable let not that man think he'll receive anyone anything from the lord and what is your faith in you first that he is and a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Okay? What are you seeking him for? The blessing? Or are you are you seeking just the blessing or the blessor? See? Okay? And Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, verses 21 under verse 24. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Sermon on the Mount. This is for the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? What are we looking at this for? To instruct us in righteousness. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thy eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? Now Paul says in the Pauline epistles, I would not have you to drink the cup of the Lord and the drunk, uh, cup of devils. Uh, how's it, how does he say it? You cannot drink the, uh, you cannot eat at the table of the Lord and eat at the table of devils. Okay, that's in the Pauline epistles for this dispensation. What does our Lord say? No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon, money, money which is related unto this world. You cannot love God and the things of this world. Again, it's either or. There's no middle ground. Okay? You can't go to the heart and to the Lord with a divided heart, a double mind. Okay? You can't. Your heart has to be broken and your mind has to be fixed on Jesus. Not just merely what he gives. Because if you do that, that that's what all these devils are doing. 
focusing rather on the blessing rather than the blessor. And when you come just seeking stuff, who's answering your prayers? The devil, God of this world, he'd love to give you stuff, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah. And of course, Matthew chapter 7, let's remember this. Again, instruction and righteousness. This is the time, uh, this is for the kingdom of heaven, what we're looking at, but let's read this anyway. Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 under verse 23. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Kingdom of heaven, the thousand year reign of our Lord Jesus Christ when he's ruling on the earth, okay? That's what the Sermon on the Mount is, uh, uh, is about, okay? But, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. We got religiosity. Oh, yeah. Oh, God knows my heart. Yeah. Yeah. And then while I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. If you're not broken of your self-righteousness, if you've saved yourself because you have just believe, or you believe that you're a good person, you know, that God loves you as a lost sinner. He loved you, and he gave his son, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, to die for you on the cross and shed your blood to make atonement for your sins, okay? Go to the cross on his terms, okay? But no, you want to boot the door and go some other way? God's love is not for you. God's love is not for you. It's simple. Like I've told you before. Go to Micah chapter 6. Micah chapter 6. I mean, it, it is. It's, it's very simple. It's very simple. Micah chapter 6, verses 6 on to verse 9. Wherewith shall I come before the Lord and, ha and bow myself before the high God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves of a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams or with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has shewed thee, O oh man. What is good? And there is none good but God. And what doth the Lord require of thee but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God? The Lord's voice crieth unto the city, and the man of wisdom shall see thy name. Hear ye the rod, and who hath appointed it? 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5, verses 13 on to verse 15. Okay. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son, Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. According to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. Now we of the church of the living God, we look at this for uh, to remind us that we know that we are saved going to heaven well, when we die. To be absent from the body is to be present uh, with the Lord. But right here, if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. God will have all men to be saved. Okay? God wants everyone to be saved. God wants all men to, be, to come unto repentance, broken of their self-righteousness. See, again, you skip over that. You're not coming to him according to his will. Hence, he's not going to hear you.
You're not coming to him on his terms. You're going to him some other way. He's not going to hear you. Go to Psalm. Psalm 145, 145, Psalm 145. We're almost done. Got a, uh, like I said, at the end of this video, we're going to look at something here online uh, just to demonstrate kind of what we've been talking about here. Psalm 145, verses 18, unto the close of the chapter. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him. To all that call upon him in truth. In truth. You're calling on the Lord, calling upon the name of the Lord without being broken. You're not calling on the name of the Lord in truth. It's that simple. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He also will hear their cry and will save them. The Lord preserveth all them that love him. Do you love him only because of what he gives you? Or because of who he is? So, so many of these Christians who are not of the church of the living God. They love God for only what they, he gives. But then again, what God are they loving that gives them all the answers to their prayers if they didn't come to the Lord on his terms? The Lord preserveth all them that love him, but all the wicked will he destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord. And let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. And of course, for verse four, uh, 18 again, the Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. Jeremiah chapter 29, just one verse. Jeremiah chapter 29, just one verse. Jeremiah chapter 29, just one verse. Verse 13. And ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. And see, if you're not broken, you're not searching for him with all your heart. Are you broken because of worldly things, but yet you're still thinking you're a good person? See, that's not a brokenness of all your heart. A heart that belongs on to the Lord is a heart that is totally broken. Isaiah chapter 66, verses 1 and 2. Thus saith the Lord, The heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me? What work are you going to do? Huh? What are you going to do to get the Lord's attention? What are you going to do to please the Lord? Nothing. And where is the place of my rest? For all these things hath mine hand made, and all those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. Poor and a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. See, you preach brokenness, true scriptural brokenness, as in Romans chapter 3, verses 10 unto 18, unto these Christians and unto the lost. They don't tremble at it. No, they scoff, they mock it. Don't they? Especially these Christians, they mock it. Yeah, that's why they whoop, jump over it. Yeah. And of course, Psalm 34. Psalm 34. Psalm 34. Verses 16 on to verse 22. 
The face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Like John Bashoff. Like this guy we're going to look at here in a little bit. Like all these easy believers and devils. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of all their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite, godly sorrow, spirit. Okay? Worldly sorrow is being just sorry for the things of the world. That kind of sorrow that you think you're going to the Lord on, but yet still blame other people, that's worldly sorrow. Godly sorrow is like, you're sorry that he died for you. That the righteous died for you. But no, you have worldly sorrow. It's like, oh, yeah, <laughs> better him than me. I've heard these Christians say, better him than me. Meaning, better that Christ died than I did. You foul, wicked devil, you have that in your heart. Anyone who is truly saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, would never. Because God died for you. In your heart, in godly sorrow, it's like, Lord, I deserve to go to hell. I would have rather have gone to hell than you died for me. But because you died for me, and I came to you broken. See, you, you people who skip over true brokenness, you don't love God. You don't love God. Better him than me. When you are truly broken and have godly sorrow, that's not in your heart. What's in your heart is like, Lord, I deserve to go to hell. I deserve it. I don't deserve your blood to cleanse me of my sin. I don't deserve to be associated with your death, burial, and resurrection. Like Peter said, depart from me, for I am a sinful man, Lord. You are too pure of eyes to look upon a sinner like me. But no, uh, better him than me. I've, I've seen these Christians say that in smugness. It's like, shut up. How dare you? See, that's not a true broken, contrite heart. And you will run into these Christians who are like that. They ain't saved. You don't, you, you don't understand true brokenness because you're not truly broken. Verse 17, the righteous cry and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. He keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. Of course, Psalm 51 which is my favorite psalm. That or Psalm 119. But Psalm 51, verses 16 and verse 17, Psalm 51 is the closest thing you're going to get to a sinner's prayer in the scripture. Psalm 51, verses 16 and 17. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O God, thou wilt not despise. And, and Proverbs chapter 15 now. Proverbs chapter 15. Proverbs chapter 15. Verses uh, 8 and 9. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord. Now hold on. Sacrifice of the wicked. 
I'll only come to the Lord because, yeah, I better, you know, a lot of people are saying that I ought to do this. And, and well, yeah, sure, I'll come to the Lord or sacrifice of the wicked. I'll put away all these things first and then go to the Lord. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord. But the prayer of the upright is his delight. The way of the wicked is an abomination unto the Lord. But he loveth him that followeth after righteousness. And then in Proverbs 15 verses 28 and 29. The heart of the righteous studieth to answer. But the mouth of the wicked poureth out evil things. The Lord is far from the wicked but he heareth the prayer of the righteous. One second, brethren. Sorry about that, brethren. 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 10 on to 10 on to verse 12. For he that will love life and see good days let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And if you come to the Lord without a broken heart, without contrition, godly sorrow, without the fear of the Lord, but just decide to believe and save yourself, call on the name of the Lord without brokenness, contrition, or fear of the Lord, and you think you're saved, and your prayers are being answered, who is answering your prayers? It isn't the Lord. The Lord answers the prayers of those who seek him, who seek him with the whole heart. Deuteronomy chapter 4. Deuteronomy chapter 4. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 23 unto verse 29. Take heed unto yourselves, lest ye forget the covenant of the Lord your God, different dispensation, instruction and righteousness here, which he made with you, and make you a graven image or the likeness of anything which the Lord thy God hath forbidden thee. For the Lord thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God talked about this before God created you and when you start worshiping Satan and Satan starts answering your prayers yeah he made you he wants you for himself he made you so you would choose him but no you've chosen you've chosen Satan so yeah God is jealous I know you lost people can't get that I know let's continue when thou shalt beget children and children's children and ye shall have remained long in the land, and shall corrupt yourselves, and make a graven image, or the likeness of anything, and shall do evil in the sight of the Lord thy God, to provoke him to anger. I call heaven and earth to witness against you this day, that ye shall soon perish, shall soon utterly perish, from off the land whereunto ye go over Jordan to possess it. Ye shall not prolong your days upon it, but shall utterly be destroyed. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations, and ye shall be left few in number among the heathen, whither the Lord shall lead you. And there shall ye serve gods, the work of men's hands, wood and stone, which neither see nor hear, nor smell, nor eat nor smell. But if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him... If thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Now, verse 29. That is something that crosses dispensational lines. See, because someone who comes to the Lord in pride without a broken heart, you're not seeking him with all your heart. That crosses dispensational lines. Seeking him with all your heart and with all your soul. Okay? And if you have self-righteousness still within your heart, you save yourself by your belief or because you merely called without being broken or having contrition or fear of the Lord. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 and 5.
Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. Dear friend, unless the Lord breaks you through you hearing, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, okay? Unless you come to the Lord on his terms, broken of yourself. That's what Romans 1, 2, and 3 are about, to break you. Unless you come to him on his terms, you are not saved. And if you think you are saved and prayers are being answered and you didn't come to the Lord on his terms, broken and contrite, who's the one answering your prayers? It isn't the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Why? Because you don't belong to him, because you have set up the idols in your heart, the stumbling block of your iniquity. Who's answering your prayer? See, someone of the church of the living God who is saved, who in their pride, because our spirit and soul are housed within this skin suit. You read Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through 4, tells you sin has been relegated here into the flesh, the skin suit. Okay, Romans chapter 7 talks about how Paul struggled with his pride, his sin, and did that which he hated. And in pride, Paul went to Jerusalem when he was warned not to. Okay? We're still going to struggle with this pride because it's in the flesh, okay? But unless you come to the Lord broken that you are a good person, you're not his. And if you think you're, you know, you're a Christian, you know, not of the church of the living God, but you're a Christian, right? <laughs> yeah. Who's answering your prayers? Who's answering your prayers when your prayers are based on worldly covetousness? It's not the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. I submit unto you. There, there, is, there is so much more that we could have gone through, but this is what the Lord had chosen. I submit unto you through the scripture that unless you are broken in your heart and contrite and have fear of the Lord in you, unless you are seeking him on, your, on his terms, not your own, God's not going to hear your prayer. How will anyone get saved? We just saw. You come to the Lord broken and contrite, God will hear you. But if you come to him in your pride, in a false pretense, God's not going to hear you. He's going to give you over to what you want. Who's answering your prayers? Consider these things, dear friend. Because time is, time is running out. Time is getting really short. Like I said, there was a whole lot more we could have added, but like I said, you know, been working on this and Lord's been adding, taking away. And then I just, you know, put it. It's like, okay, Lord, <laughs> got a lot. What do you want me to say? Speak, Lord, for your servant heareth. So, that is going to be it for this video. Uh, we're we're going to be uh, checking something out online. I'm going to use my editing thing to put this all together. So if it seems a little strange, that's why. But uh, we're going to be looking at a website here exactly what we're talking and what we've been talking about in this video so um so yeah but uh for this part of it thank you brethren for everything that um thank you brethren for everything for your prayers for your help thank you so much we love you thank you brethren thank you so much we love you and um, hopefully this will help you. Hopefully this will give you some things to consider. You really need to consider whether or not you are truly saved and of the church and living God. You need to consider how you apparently came to be saved. 
Were you saved because you just believed? Were you saved because you merely just called upon the name of the Lord? Did you skip over that nasty little thing of brokenness? If you did, you're not saved. It's that simple. If you're not saved, if you're one of these Christians, let us reason together, you and I. Be a link in the description box for you. But anyway, like I said, we're going to get to this uh, one thing online. And, um, and this part of it is done. So thank you, brethren. We love you. We'll see you in the next video. Alrighty, brethren. I just uh, in light of the in light of what we just looked at, I want to give you an uh, show you another example of um, of what we have just looked at in the scriptures. This is, as you can see, this is this website for this Larry Hutton Ministries, and unfortunately, this wicked devil does have a YouTube channel here. Um, I don't recommend that you check him out. He, he, this guy is a wicked devil, um, a total false, pro false prophet. But okay, this this is what I, this is what we're talking about. Okay, now here we're just going to go through this really quickly. Okay, it says salvation prayer. Now see, it's devils like this that these easy believism scumbags will base their attacks off of be, uh, because of guys like this, okay? And they're both, they're all lost. This guy, Larry Hutton, the easy believers and devils, which this guy is, uh, they're all lost. It's the Hegelian principle, uh, working one, both sides of the argument to control the outcome of the argument, okay? But check this out, okay? Check this out, all right? Mr. Larry Hutton Ministries. This, this guy is wicked. Okay. Now, right here. Okay. Look at this. Salvation prayer. You can become a part of the family of God. Oh. <laughs> and uh, right here. Look at this. God is not mad at you. Really. God is not mad at you. Really, huh? Really, God is not mad at you. He isn't counting your sins and holding them against you. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one of that's one of the biggest lies out there. That is one of the biggest lies out there. Um, Psalm uh, seven, Psalm seven, Psalm chapter seven, verses eleven and twelve. God judgeth the righteous. And God is angry with the wicked every day. If he turn not, he will whet his sword. He hath bent his bow and made it ready. Verse 13. He hath also prepared for him the instruments of death. He ordaineth his arrows against the persecutors. God is not mad at you. Um... If you don't come to the Lord on his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of the Lord, call upon his name and that he may save you. But you boot the door and go up some other way, you're a liar, you're a thief. God is mad at you, okay? God's love is not for you if you reject the true gospel. You are a child of wrath. You are a child of disobedience, okay? Do you understand? God's love is not for you if you reject him. Even in this dispensation. Yes, God's love is at the cross. You have to go to the cross on his terms, not your own. And then you've got devils like this guy. God is not mad at you. Yeah. If you don't come to the Lord on his terms and you reject the true gospel, yes, God is mad at you. 
excuse me, God is angry at you. Because remember, according to scripture, mad, madness is not talking about anger or temper. Mad is talking about brute insanity. But he says, God is not mad at you. He isn't counting your sins and holding them against you. Uh, yes, he is. Unless you come to him on his terms. Okay? You're a child of wrath. You are a child of disobedience. Okay? He wants so much to have a personal relationship with you that he sent Jesus, his only son. Yeah, what Jesus is this guy talking about? To shed his blood, die on the cross, and then be raised from the dead. He did all that so that you can be set free from the bondage of sin and the fear of death and enter into eternal life. Dr. Larry Hutton, the Lord rebuke you, sir. And I use that term, sir, lightly. Vile scum that you are. Okay, now check this out. Accepting Jesus Christ is very simple. Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whoever, whosoever, that means you. Ah, now see, this is what these easy believism devils attack when uh, people uh, just quote Romans 10, 13 without preaching to them the truth of Romans 3, verses 10 on to verse 18, that there is none good. No, not one. See, these guys are doing exactly what the easy believism devils are doing uh, in skipping over brokenness. Okay? He's doing the exact same thing. He's just using Romans 10, 13. The, that calling alone. That calling alone on the name of the Lord saves you. You call on the Lord out of a broken heart. Out of a contrite heart. Out of a broken and contrite spirit. You come to the Lord broken of your self-righteousness and of your pride. Okay? Then, Romans 10, 13 verses 9 and 10, uh, from whatever, okay? But then is when you lead someone on to whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved, you know? that. Let's go there. Romans chapter 10. Okay, Romans chapter 10. Go there, come on. Come on. I know we just went through a whole bunch, but uh, come on, Romans chapter 10. Okay? See, when the Lord uses you to bring someone onto himself through the Romans road, okay? You begin with Romans 1, 2, and 3, okay? Which shows you the lost sinner of your depravity, of your need of his salvation because there is none righteous, no, not one. You ain't a good person. See, and then you, you got this schmuck skipping over that just like the easy believers and heretics do. Okay, but here, Romans chapter 10, okay, Romans chapter 10, Romans chapter 10, verses 9 on to verse 13, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How do you arrive at this point? Hmm? See, because you can just go up to any lost person out there and quote Romans 10 verses 9 on to verse 13. And then coax someone into a false conversion. Just about, call upon the name of the Lord. Just ask him to save you without preaching to them brokenness. Without showing them that they, through the scripture, that they are no good. That they can't save themselves. Okay? You can't skip over that. That's exactly what this Mr. Hutton scum is doing. Just like the easy believism heretics, okay? They skip over that hard, nasty part, that glorious truth that I'm a sinner who is chief. Oh, we're all sinners. What about you personally? See, personal accountability and responsibility, brokenness, this guy is avoiding it. 
See, and it's guys like this that give the easy believism devils fuel to go after the truth of the gospel. This is truth. Yes, it is. But see, what is he leaving out? He's leaving out brokenness, repentance, turning from yourself unto the Lord. That's what this guy is leaving out. Very dangerous. Very dangerous. Very dangerous. Okay, let's continue. Okay? Say with our mouths. Verses 9 and 10 tell us that if we say with our mouths that Jesus is Lord and believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. But see, see, okay? And then you got these wicked devil, easy believism heretics. It's like, well, see, prayer, prayer doesn't save you. Calling upon the name of the Lord, that's a work. Same thing. This guy is avoiding jumping over repentance. You know what? I hit it again. Hit it again. This is what this guy and all these devils, easy believism, ecumenicalism, okay? This is what these guys are avoiding. Romans chapter 3. I know we already looked at it, but come on, okay? Romans chapter 3, verses 10, on to verse 18. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. That includes you. There is none that understand it. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. And see what these uh, devils like to do is they, they use the umbrella thing. It's like, well, everybody is not good. Everybody is a sinner, which is true. But see, this points to a sinner who is chief, okay? <laughs> this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of who all are chief? No, of whom I am chief. Personal accountability and responsibility. Okay? That's what this guy is avoiding. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace have they not known. Why? There is no fear of God before their eyes. Sky isn't preaching. He's, he's using the truth deceptively, okay? All right? Okay? He's using the word of God deceitfully. Okay? That's what this guy is doing. Let's continue. It's that easy. Verses 9 and tell us how easy it is to receive salvation, eternal life with God. You receive it. You receive it. He doesn't receive you. You receive him. Right? See? Oh. Say this prayer out loud right now. Dear God, I want to be part of your family. You said in your word, capital W, of course, this guy's a devil. You see this guy's video? He does. He doesn't even use, uh, he, number one, he uses a Bible, but he doesn't even use a book. He uses like uh, one of them uh, tablet things, okay? God, this guy is wicked, okay? Dear God, I want to be part of your family. You said in your word that if I acknowledge that you raised Jesus from the dead and that I accept him as my Lord and Savior, I would be saved. What about brokenness? Huh? What about the fact that there is none righteous, no, not one, including you? <laughs> I now say that I believe you raised Jesus from the dead. Yeah, the devils also believe and tremble, okay? And that he is alive and well. I, I accept him now as my personal Lord and Savior. And I accept my salvation from sin right now. <laughs> That's not funny. I am now saved. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Savior. Thank you, Father God for forgiving me, saving me, and giving me eternal life with you. Amen. Yeah, what's next? 
If you just prayed this prayer for the first time, I welcome you to the family of God. We would love to pray for you and provide with you resources to help you in your walk with God. Yeah, this yeah, this guy is walking people into hell. Okay, this wicked guy, this Larry Hutton. Watch out for this type of stuff, brethren. Okay, this guy is using truth, but he's using the word of God deceitfully. Okay, he is um, corrupting. Okay, watch out for these types of people, brethren. Who is he directing his prayers to? Who is he teaching people to direct his prayers onto? Not the Lord Jesus Christ of the authorized version of the scriptures, no. But onto the one, Satan, who said, All this will be thine if, if thou fall down and worship me, all shall be thine. Okay. Just wanted to add this into this little thing. Thank you very much, brethren. Bye bye.